shit, coughing and everything. Had ministers right there with him, but I got to preach. <laughs> I got to preach. My God. My wife said the reason why he's preaching because he's the one everybody came to hear. But sometimes you have to shift gears. Sometimes you have to throw a surprise on people. I know I'm supposed to be preaching tonight because I'm going to do it to some of y'all. I know I'm supposed to be preaching tonight, but tonight we're going to let this one preach. Because, listen, people need to know that you have anointed people in your church. Yes, yes. People can't think you're the only one that's anointed. They can't think that you're the only one that get a word from God. They can't think that you're the only one that God speaks through. True. If that was the case, God would have never spoke through the donkey, would he? God spoke through the donkey. God spoke through the donkey. He did get to the donkey. He said, all these years, I've been, I've been, you've been riding on me. Have I ever did anything crazy? He said, don't you see an angel standing there with that sword in his hand? If God can speak through a donkey, he can speak through anybody he wants to. Because he made me the pastor of this church, that don't mean I'm the only one that has something to say. It's already bad enough that there's no testimony service. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, you said the five-fold ministry. Can you tell us what it is? The five-fold ministry is the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and teacher. Wow. That's your five-fold ministry right there. Uh -huh. It's a hand. It's a hand. Yeah, but only one of them can be touched by all other, of the other four. Oh, and that's the thumb. And that's the thumb. That's right. That's the thumb. That's right. That's the apostle. That's the the apostle. He's the hand. You see what I'm saying? Wait, so, he can't. Uh huh. It's a hand. Yes. It's a hand. And the so five folds ministry can be touched by everybody else. Mm -hmm. But these cannot touch everybody else. That's right. They can't touch each other. It cannot be in just one person. That's right. It's called a hand. Mm -hmm. wow. Now, now, now. <laughs> being that you that that the fivefold ministry is headed by the office of the apostle. The apostle is supposed to have enough wisdom to know that God sent people into the ministry to be a blessing to him. Yes. You don't have to do everything by yourself. There are many places that I've been that I even see the pastors allowing their ministers and elders and, and evangelists to preach and teach. Or I've seen them allow him, allow them to teach, but if the power falls, they'll never preach again. <laughs> it happened to me. It happened to me. I've seen pastors that their wife has stood up to preach. And, and preach and tell the house back. She ain't preach no more. Because everything is in me. That devil is alive. And then folk wonder, wonder why the church falling all apart. Why, why folks sleeping with each other? Why you got homosexuals in the choir and all this stuff? Because the fivefold ministry is not activated in your ministry. We have to understand that we were given the Bible for a reason. It says biblical instruction before leaving this earth. You got to understand everything that's in this word. We have to go by what the word says. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times, folks think pastors think because this is my church, they're telling you, this is my church. <laughs> this is my church. I run this. Okay, since you said this is your church, ain't no room for me to be in here. Time for me to leave. Because that lets me know right then, if this is your church, you ain't letting God do what he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Over the last two weeks, we done heard about four churches that shut down. Four of them shut down. Yeah, if they haven't shut down, the people are leaving. Uh -huh. Because why? Listen, there's no need for me to sit here with with a license and a degree, and you won't let me say nothing when you know I'm anointed to do what God sent me here to do. There's no need for me to sit here and die on the vine. Amen. Amen. Listen, one thing I'm going to tell you right now, this thing is been worrying me. Yeah, help me with this. This thing is worrying me because I want to be loose because I want to tell you exactly what God has been telling me ever since I talked to Bishop. If the fivefold ministry is not, is not activated and operated in your ministry, your, your church is living a slow death. He said, I said, he said, I gave some apostles, some prophets, some, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the church. Yeah. Now, that's the word. Now, this is the New Testament. We're talking about the Old Testament. This is the New Testament.
says, but this is what the word of God says. I put these gifts in the church for the, for the perfecting of the saints and the edifying of the body of Christ. And the work of the ministry. How's that working for you? Yeah, how's that working for you? You gotta understand. My grandfather told me just now. I was going to say gave that to me, but when you take the first letter of the second of the six, edifying and the work, that is P E W. Those in the pew. Those in the pew. They sit there. Yeah. They sit there. Yeah. 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 You got people look, there's people sitting in, in the in the in the seat or in the pew right now. They can preach the same well, message no. that I'm preaching. Well, no. You know why? Because they tapped into the spirit. Yeah, they can hear what God is saying. Man. How do you even, how do you think you even knew? How did that, do you think you just thought about it and said to sing a song about love? No, you tapped into the spirit. Amen. I had no idea. You see what I'm saying? But see, one thing about God, God is not stupid. Right. Say that, Pastor. He's not dumbfounded. That's right. He didn't say stuff just to be saved. That's right. He said it for a reason. He, said, he put down instructions through the men and women of God, and we're expected to follow every letter of his word. Amen. Wow. Mm -hmm. He said, go into the heavens and highways and compel men to come in. Right. That's what he said. You supposed to make it so irresistible that they just leave. Got to come in. You see what I'm saying? One thing that, that draws people to a church, and I have to be careful with this, is when they come to the church and see that I use my, my clergy. Uh -huh. They come there and they see that. That's like right. uh, 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 New, Year, New Year's Eve service. Yeah. Everybody in here preach. <laughs> Even the visitors. I let everybody preach. Yeah. You have to understand, if you were born, God, he, 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 he sent you to this earth with a gift. Yeah. Yep. Yes, he did. He, did. he didn't want to born by happenstance. He created you for a purpose. Say that. Mm. He didn't just create you so you just walk around and, and do nothing. Mm. Especially if he said, I created them. Let us create man in our way. If I'm in the image of God, I got something I'm supposed to be doing. Amen. I never heard of that before until I came out here. You can't pass the church unless you got a degree. difference between a prophet and I have been hearing all the people saying that they're disciples what's the difference is is what's this discipleship that I've been hearing about discipleship is nothing it's a student of God it's a follower of God all of it, I don't care what your title is you're still a disciple you're still learning you're still learning you're following a man or woman of God to learn more than what you already know and a prophet is called of God. A prophet is called of God and is the mouthpiece for the Lord. That's right. That's what a prophet is. Yeah. The reason why folks don't want the prophet operating in their church is because they don't want him getting in their business. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Bible, you always have the king, the 
have a priest and a prophet. That's they right. always have right. one. They always operated together. Even if it was a wicked king, he had a prophet. He had a prophet and a priest. <laughs> he couldn't run the kingdom by himself. No, he had to hear from God. That's it, right? Even if he was right, he was mm -hmm. still asked, you know, what do you want from God? They used to sing a song back in the day. So many fallen by the way, son. Lord, 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 help me to stay. Without the fivefold ministry, everybody gonna That's fall right. by the way, son. Because listen, what did what did what did Gideon say when the angel came up on him and called him a mighty man of God? He said, he said, if there is a God, we'll be the miracle signs and wonders that our father told us about. This is what's killing the church. Listen. The five, if the fivefold ministry is not ministry is not operating, there are no miracles, that signs, that and wonders. Right. There are none. That is the word. First Corinthians twelve chapter yes, talks about right. the gifts of the church. Yes, right. Yeah. There's gifts of healing, gifts of miracles, tongues, interpretation, right. prophecy, all yes. kinds of God to put the gifts the in the church. It's in the word to be used, and you got people that are sitting there with divine healing just right. running up and down with their body and they just sitting there. And you wonder why folks can't get healed of cancer and all that kind of stuff. Because it's not operating that's in the ministry. Right. That's mm. right. If that's right. It has not been released to operate. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm so thankful, honestly, for this church. Like I, like I said, the second Sunday, second Saturday, I came pretty much her friend, you know, God was trying to lay hands on, on her friend who was just a student. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm there like, I'm a visitor. Like, mm -hmm. And I don't really do this stuff right now in my life. Mm -hmm. But because, and I know it's because of the atmosphere that I was in that was freeing me to, to you know, to experience what I need to do. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, the other church, I wouldn't be here and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I heard, you know, lay hands on her tongue because I'm wrong with tongue. And I wanted to ask her, okay, what's wrong with her? Like, I don't know if she's saying to it. This is why this is called impartation class. Mm -hmm. My job is to impart That's to right. you, yeah. to let you know what you're qualified to do. Yeah. If you have the Holy Ghost, God can use you to prophesy at any time. Yeah. He can use you to heal at any time. You can speak with new tongues at any time. You can cast out a demon at any time. But if you don't know that, listen, if you don't have the freedom, oh, you better hear what I'm saying. If you don't have the freedom to operate in your call, folks are suffering because you can't do what you're supposed to do. They tell somebody, you better not stand up and say this. You better not. You better not go lay hands. That's right. Don't you go lay no, hands. No, 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 no. I'm not listening. They, they tell you this. No, no, we don't do that here. Right. Or I'm not I thought this was the church. You're not believed to do that. Uh -huh. now, listen to this. Now, listen. Now they got full of gospel Baptist church. They speaking in tongues, laying hands on folks, yeah. casting out demons. But the apostolic people talking about Baptists ain't right. <laughs> they doing what we supposed to be doing. One thing I know, God sent me out here for a reason. Amen. That's the that's the class of classification of an apostle, one who is sent. Right. God sent me here. I want you to go to California. Mm -hmm. I had no idea this is where I was going to end up at pastoring the church. I had no idea. I was just coming out here because He told me to go. Yeah. We had to get to the point where the Lord tells us to do stuff. Okay. Right. We let's do it. That's right. Amen. Like the Nike commercial. Just do it. Yes. When you get out there and you just do what he, whatever the Lord told you to do, you will see how God bless you, how he opened doors, how he made way. Yes, ma'am. No, I'm, I'm just agreeing with you. Amen. Uh -huh. Because yes. one thing I know, <laughs> if I don't do what God tells me to do, the blood is on my hands. Amen. Mm -hmm. That means even when I have to chasten, rebuke, exhort, uh, lift up. I have to do everything God tells me to do. Because why? God has put me over you as a pastor. I'm responsible for your soul. Amen. Yeah. If you're here sitting in this church and you're a member of this church, I have a responsibility to you. Mm. I have to pull out of you what's in you. Thank you, Jesus. God shows me what's in you and I have to pull it out of you. Mm. 
A lot of times, you go, I didn't know why I was thinking like that. I didn't know why I like to do this and like to do that because nobody has ever tried to try to try to uh, uh, be a, a teacher to you. Mm-hmm. It's time out. Listen, it's time out for watered down sermons. Mm. Time out for that. It's time to speak the truth. Amen. All this stuff that uh, what's her name going through right now? Kimberly. She better tell the truth. Amen. She better tell the truth. Stand up for the word of God. Mm-hmm. But folks get to the point now, because this is where my money comes from, I back up off this. Uh-uh. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is made up for the righteous. And I want mine. Amen. Mm-hmm. I want what God has for me. Amen. And the only way I'm going to get it is to do what God said. Yes. God told me when he put me in, in position as a pastor of the church, I want you to raise the people up. I want you to stir up the gifts in the church. Thank you, I Jesus. want you to teach them the word of God. Yes, I Lord. I want you to show them that I am real. I am still That's doing right. these things. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. Most churches you go to, ain't, ain't even a testimony service. Folk okay, ain't heard about God perform the miracles so long, so they just sit there like, oh my God, woe with me. I'm just going to die. Right. And the person sitting right next to you is, just came out of what you're going through. Mm-mm. But they can't tell you because there's no testimony service. Mm. I know a lot of folks don't agree with the way I, with the way I run church out here, but listen, this is the way I grew up. I grew up like this, watching demons cast out, watching prophetic ever come forth, watching miracles, signs, and wonders. I, that's why I grew up. Amen. Amen. Why would I step away from it now? Because it, it's not the the, uh, it's, not it's, the, it's not the popular thing to do out here. Right. I got to stand on God's side. He the one making sure I eat every day. Amen. He the one making sure my bills get paid. He the one making sure the devil don't Right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, why would I not do what he's telling me? Yes. I know God. And I know what he expects of me. Mm-hmm. He expects for me to do his will. Yes. He expects for me to teach what he tells me to teach. Yes. I can't tell him to teach one thing and I teach something else because I think it's not possible. Right. This is going on YouTube right here. Folks are going to be mad at me, but I do not care. I don't care about being popular. Well, you better say I that. That's right. I care about being I care about operating in the powerful Thank you, Jesus. A lot of times, the pastor hasn't been taught this himself. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times, the, the ministry that the pastor came out of, they weren't operating in the Bible. But when he asked them, like I think the blood is taken, I think the mm-hmm. man, when you confess a mm-hmm. calling, he will tell us, I have a death picture. Mm-hmm. I don't need no more than a picture. Mm-hmm. I have a death for so I don't need no more than a picture. Yeah. So you go and do that. I'm going to tell you why they do that. Because, listen, the Lord has already showed them what's in you. And they're intimidated. This is so. This is really so. And I was testified by one of the other uh, evangelists there who said, you better do what God says to you. He calls you. Do it or don't. That's right. That's right. I'm telling her, I have to be in order because he's the one over me. I can't just get up there and do stuff without him allowing it. Otherwise, I'm just this is the way you do things. You acknowledge to the pastor. You can come to me and say, Pastor, the Lord called me to preach. He called me to prophesy. He called me to lay hands. I'm all, I already know it. I'm just waiting for you to acknowledge it. Now, when you come to me and acknowledge the fact that God has called you to do these things, and, and I don't let you do them, who do you think God can hold responsible? You. This is why so many churches are having problems right now. This is, yes, ma'am. Um, back to what Mom was saying, and the evangelist baptizing her about you need to do what God has told you to do. A lot of times when that happens, you hear people say, 
Pulpit is not the only place you need to be. That's what they tell you real fast. Yeah. They tell you that real fast. When your, your pulpit out there in the street, you go out there and preach out there. But where am I supposed to get trained at? Yeah. I'm supposed to be trained in-house. Right. And I came to him because he was my leader. And I came to him because I thought he would be the one to do. Let me tell you something. Everybody that can preach is not a pastor. Everybody that can teach is not a pastor. That's right. Everybody that can prophesy is not a pastor. Everybody who has an evangelistic gift is not a pastor. That's why it says he gave some. That's right. Yeah. That's the word. Mm -hmm. You got preachers running around out here now, they pastor and they renegade. The only reason why they got a church because they would they couldn't get how they went over in the church where they was at. So they went and opened another church. Folk came in under them, and then the anointing flows down. Everybody crazy just like them. I'm telling you what the Lord told me. The anointing flows down. The reason why God can move in here the way he does is because we allow the anointing to move. We allow, we allow the fivefold ministry to operate in the church. Might not be a lot of us yet, but God moves in this place like a building this full. Yes, he does. There's not a service that we came in here for that God did not move. That's right. Somebody got blessed. Amen. Somebody got healed. Somebody got delivered. Somebody got set free. Somebody going to leave here different from when they came in here. That's the whole point of having a church. But when you allow the enemy to trip, trap your mind, I'm the only one. Everything works through me. You got a problem. Hmm. Oh, I know they said they're going to be watching this on Facebook and, and all that stuff. I don't care because, listen, he told me to teach this. Amen. Amen. He told me to teach it. How are you going to be an apostolic believer and you don't even believe in prophecy? You don't believe in the apostles. Well, the, the, the apostles walk with Jesus. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. The Jesus dwells in me. That means he's walking with me. You can't be an apostle unless you walk with Jesus. Paul said, I'm an apostle out of due season. He didn't even know he met Jesus. But he said, God called me to this. There's a shift taking place in this ministry. An apostolic shift. And God is ready to do what he needs to do in this city. Amen. God is ready to move like he needs to move in this city. But before you can operate in your calling. This is what you got to have. 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. Yeah, right. yeah. If you don't love nobody, God is not going to operate through you. Right. Now, I've seen folks that they claim that they're evangelists, they're, pa they're pastors, they're apostles, and they're the meanest folk I've ever seen in my life. Right. They're so mean to snatch a backup yeah. from them. That's how mean they are. Then you, have, then you got those saints. They, they so anointed. They sit there with a mean look on their face the whole service. Can't laugh. Can't have a good time. That ain't in the scripture. <laughs> be so holy to you just scare everybody. That ain't in the scripture. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. We have to understand that God is real. And his word is true. Yes, it is. We have to understand this. <laughs> we, we have to understand it. First Corinthians 13. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, which is love, I become a sounding brass and a thinking cymbal. Clang, 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 clang. All you know is making noise. Because the scripture says God searches the rise of the heart. He knows why you do what you do and say what you say. Mm -hmm. And though I have the gift of prophecy, oh, here we go, yeah. and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can move mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. In order for you to even operate properly in a gift or a calling, you have to love for In order for you to be a pastor, you have to be a people person. You can't become so so untouchable that folk can't even come. Uh, right. Right. I told the king of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> even even yeah. Jethro told Moses, look, you're going to kill yourself. Uh -huh. you need, 
look, you need to get some of these men you got right here and, 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 and let them do some of what you say. Yeah. And God confirmed me. He said, I tell you what, pick out 70 and bring them up here around that tabernacle. Amen. I'm going to take them your spirit and put it on them. And this is why God sends people into the ministry. Amen. Because he wants to take of my anointing and my wife's anointing and put it on the people in the congregation. Amen. 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 And it's in that I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And it says that he passes after Exactly, after my own heart. Right. Jesus loved people. Yeah. Even the saying he even the, the Pharisees said he loved them, even though he would get on them all the time. He loved them. It's like Kim Burrell said, God loved the person, but he hates the sin. If it was an abomination to do to Romney, it's an abomination to Romney. Right. Yeah. There, uh, 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 Pastor uh, 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 T.L. Carter told me, it's 619 thou shalt not in, in the Bible. And one of them is thou shalt not lay with mankind as is a woman. You see? But don't nobody want to teach that because that's not popular. My job is to cry loud and spare not. That's my job. Like a trumpet in Zion. Expose the devil for who he really is. He's a deceiver. Above all things, he's a liar. And he's the father of lies. It's all about Jesus. It ain't about us. It ain't about us at all. It's about what he said in the word. It's about what God had the men of God to speak about in the Old and New Testament. It said everything they spoke was from the inspiration of God. He told them what to write down and they wrote it down. And it has become law. Mm -hmm. Ain't no need you get mad with me. The same thing is in my Bible when in the Bible on the shelf at Walmart. The same thing. God's word does not change. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said, what I did when they started to get to the point where they were not reverencing me, I turned them over to a reprobate mind. Now they do the things that are inconvenient for them to do. And they think it's right because they think they're smart enough. Mm. This is the word. When we talk about homosexuality, I think that's the whole thing is that they really don't believe anymore that what they're doing is sin. They don't. Because other reprobate minds. Like they don't even understand. Some of them, let's be clear, some of them don't even understand it as sin, where others, of course, do. But it's because Satan has blinded their minds. That's why. Yeah. Don't you know the people you hang around have spirits over them? Oh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Spirits get on folk from the people you hate. You have to be careful who come in your house. Yeah. Right. Folk come in your house and drop off spirits. Yeah. Then, you, then you wonder why I'm acting like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why are your kids acting like that? Yeah. Why, are you, why are your children? Why are my children acting crazy yeah. like this? Yeah. Folk don't come in your house and drop off spirits. <laughs> listen, one thing I know. If, listen, if my son or my daughter is, is, is practicing that, that uh, homosexuality, my job is to tell them that it's wrong. That's my job. It's not my job to beat them over the head with, but it's my job to show them in the Word. Listen, this is what the Word says. You can't dispute the Word. Because like I said, it ain't only in my Bible, it's in your Bible too. But in order for me to operate as a pastor that's after God's heart, first I have to love people. Yeah. If you bring, listen, if you bring your child or your brother or sister to me and they're struggling with a homosexual spirit, which means if they're struggling, they're practicing it. Right. Hmm? You bring them to me, it's not my job to bash them, to make them feel bad. It's my job to sit down and talk with them and get them to see that th that's not the way. This is not the way. You're not going to get in heaven like this. You're not going to get there. Uh, yes, ma'am. Somebody persuaded them. Yes. Right. In that way. So why couldn't uh, the word of God. Persuade them to come back. God, will, God will woo you and bring you back. Yes, he will. That's right. That's right. 
his word, his yeah. power. And when you speak his word, mm -hmm. like you say, not bashing them. Well, no, you can't beat them up in love. Speak his word in honesty and in love. Oh, yeah. it, something is penetrating. Exactly. It's penetrating. Put your head. Because once, once you plant that seed, they're going to keep on hearing. Mm -hmm. And right. they sleep, they'll be hearing. It's right. Because his word is powerful and it's it sharp like a two edged sword. Yes, it, it cuts going, coming, and going. Yeah. Listen, the devil is trying to steal our children. Yes, he is. He's trying to take control of our children. Right. And we're allowing it when we know the truth. And it's not just the children, it's the grown folk, too. My wife and I, we were somewhere, and we, we, we this guy, these two guys, they want he's just going to slap the guy on the backside. Bam! I see you at home, baby. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Yes. Not only is it prevalent out in the street, it's prevalent in the church. It's in the church. Yes. It's in your TV, too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. it's, it's oh, yeah. prime time more show. More. Oh, yes. More and, more. and it's on game show. Yes. Yep. On the newlywed game. Yes. What did you have? Yeah. Two men. Not yes. like the you, what? You watch them commercials. They are, they are flicking those stuff. They say two old men old. in a band together. Right. Or two women kissing each other. Yeah, it's subliminal messages. Everything you watch. They have a black and a white man walking down the street holding hands. And I mean, it's like a flash. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? They just flash yeah, it exactly. away. Exactly. They flash yeah. it. And then, you know, it's all, it, then you have all other kinds of things that you see, you know. But see, this is the thing. What's going? Listen, most of these young people, they're not really gay. Right. They're just experimenting. Right. Yes. That's all they're doing. Yeah. They're experimenting and saying, I, I just want to see what it's like. They, they're not gay for real. Yes, ma'am. Right now, well, yesterday it was on the news where now in California, they have the restrooms for with trannies as well as the mm -hmm. men can go into the same restroom. Do you know what's getting ready to happen? three figures up there, the man, right. the woman, and the trannies. This right. is what's getting ready to happen. Young thing. girls are going to start getting raped in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what's getting ready to happen. And the devil is sitting back laughing. I'm telling you. Right. He just said, just come on, come on, come on a little bit closer. Right, running rampart. I have, I have, I have a, a lesbians and homosexuals in my family. Yeah. And they grew up in church from babies. They know the truth. They know. Yeah. But what am I supposed to do if the parents are not even speaking out against it? Only thing I can say now, you know that's wrong. You know you were taught better than that. But we have to understand. The Bible says, "With loving kindness." Have I drawn thee? Have I drawn thee? Mm -hmm. I have to come. This is what he said. He said, "I'm supposed to be wise as a serpent." And harmless as it does. I'm supposed to be able to come talk to a person that's in that situation. And they really don't even know I'm trying to get them out of it. I'm just talking to them. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There has to be order in the church. If there's no fivefold ministry, there is no order. Mm -hmm. We got off on that for a few minutes, but the Lord said move on. Because we have more to talk about here. But you but listen. You wonder why the, the anointing is not moving in churches the way it's supposed to. You wonder why the power of God is not felt like it is. Some, listen, the worst thing can happen is you can walk into a church on a Sunday morning and it's cold. You come there expecting the move of God and the whole service is cold. Right. You have to wonder what in the world is going on now. Now, the first time I come here, it's like that. Maybe it might not, might not be like that the second time. Then I come back the second time, it's the same way. The fivefold ministry is not operating in the church. Amen? This is something I found right here, and I'm going to read this to you. It says, the cry we hear from the church today is, why has God forsaken the church? Why is there no power, no authority, no fear? The answer is very simple. It is because there is no godly order in today's modern church. What we have is a one so-called lead, one, a one man, one plan, out of order social club. Wow. Hmm? Social club. The so-called leaders come out of their denominational seminaries with a head full of precepts and doctrines 
but with no idea of what God's word says about proper order. Every pastor is supposed to know Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some. Every pastor is supposed to know 1 Corinthians 12. God gave these gifts to the church. Every pastor is supposed to know 1 Corinthians 13 chapter is the love chapter. Every single pastor is supposed to know John 3, 16 says, For God so loved. Every pastor is supposed to know this. So if, if I know this and I read it in the word of, of time and time and time again, why am I not operating in love? Right. Why am I, why am I, why, why, why is God sending people in here for me to, for me to stir them up and I'm just letting them sit there? Oh, I done gave a license. They have the title of evangelist, uh, prophet or what, they don't, no, not in the church, they, they ain't no prophet. Uh, evangelist or minister or elder, but that's all they got the title. Yeah, you, you got, you got, you got 35 minutes to sit right there. The only thing they get a chance to do is read the scripture and say a prayer. Maybe. That's it. Somehow. <laughs> Listen. And then they get mad when they find out that they done stepped out and came somewhere like over here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because Hallelujah. I'm supposed to know what walked through that door right there. Amen. Evangelist. I'm right, aren't I? Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to know what walks in here. Why? Because I have a spirit of discernment. Right. When you walk in here and you're bound with something, I'm supposed to know it. If I don't know it, she does. If she 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 don't know it, she does. Amen. That's because the fivefold ministry is operating. Fully operating. How in the world? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. But I was just saying, when you're saying if she does it, then she does it. If she does it, then she does So would that be um, like when you see your sister and you see that her countenance, you know, she's trying to smile, but she's still having it? Yeah, you know something. You know, you done picked up on something. Something wrong. Mm -hmm. When I watch each one of you walk in here, I know what your countenance is supposed to look like. When you walk in and you're not looking like you're supposed to look, okay, Lord, what's wrong? I'm all, I automatically go into prayer mode. Okay, Lord, what's wrong? Show me what's wrong. Because when he shows me what's wrong, I'm supposed to minister to that somewhere in the service. I can't let you leave out of here the same way you came in here. But folk are on, they, they got these time schedules and all this stuff. God doesn't get a chance to do anything. We got we got to have service done in an hour and fifteen minutes. How in the world are you gonna get some Jesus in an hour and fifteen minutes? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I used to get in so much trouble. We got that. I'm serious. Like during the same church I was talking about, you know, because if God, like if if my sister told me to do prayer and worship, we're gonna do prayer and worship until the church got to amen. If I was doing it, it's like look, I used to get in so much trouble because. I'm, just, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't say without the time frame. Oh, I got in trouble for that. Because God is moving. I'm like, I'm not going to just shut down prayer. Uh -huh. God is moving. Not now. If you have a gift for praise and worship, you're not satisfied until you see God move. Yes. Yes. Am I right, Monisha? You're not satisfied until you see God touch somebody. Yes. When you're the one who I call up here to lead prayer. Ain't no need you praying and then keep looking over here at me. No, pray. <laughs> pray till you hear the Lord say, that's enough. I tell my wife, I'll be preaching and the Lord say, that's enough. I say, okay, Lord, I'll go ahead and say that. Amen. Amen. Because, listen, God is not crazy. I talk to these people over here. God is not crazy. Yes, we know. No, he's not. <laughs> he's not crazy. Amen. And he's not crazy enough to dwell somewhere where he's not wanted. Yeah. Amen. Exactly. And neither should we. That's right. Thank you, Jesus, for that. The answer is very simple. It is because there is no godly order in today's modern church, but we have what we have is a one man, one plan out of order social club. The denominational seminaries with a head full 
of, of precepts and doctrines, but with no idea of what God's word says about proper order. Listen to this. If they have an eldership or deacon board, it is only there to rubber stamp the one plan of the head man. Yes, we man. see the results of the church system today by those who attend the church because they can carry their sins into the church service with no fear of correction or conviction. The pews are full of adulterers, liars, cheaters, fornicators, and every other abomination. They are, they are mixed in with those who are seeking God and their spiritual growth is being dwarfed by a warmed over, watered down, regurgitated word of God. They sit and weep for the old days when God moved in the service. Today, the loud music, the shots, the working up of emotion is all they can expect. They are informed it is the spirit moving, but they have, but they leave the service empty, starving for true substance. Amen. They come in and leave the same way they came in. Right. They haven't been fulfilled or anything. Why? Because the proper order of God is not operating in the church. Uh huh. It's something really obvious. I was in 2020 that I was, it's been on me like, what is, being, talking about the anointing. Mm -hmm. you know, and I know probably my friend will be part of it. I've been stuck there like the anointing. And I'm like, you know, is it really the anointing if someone's not changing behind the word? That they hear because I'm like, at least I want to go home. I want to this like I want to get the word and learn more because of what I hear. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if it's not even that, not even that little bit, then is it really anointing or is it just a gift or is it just a talent? You know what I'm saying? Because you know we sit here crying and stuff. But is it the anointing or is it God? I'm not talking about this church. Mm -hmm. I know she's I know what she's But I'm just saying that in other places, or is it just emotional because um, you made me feel a certain way? You know. A lot of times. A lot of times, folk are just made to feel emotional. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And and the reason why they're made to feel emotional is because you want them to think that God is really moving. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You want them to think that God is really moving, but God can't really move if everything is locked up in me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, honey. On Christmas Day, we visited the church. Yeah. The word was not. Uh, it wasn't. But it was. Just, it was powerful. It was powerful. <sighs> then the exhortation that came. Out oh my the, God! Just tore the church up. I just had me a shout. I had to shout it like that. And, and then that, that it was his wife that exhorted. Right. Ah, you got to be a shout. You good. Right. You see, he right. preached. And then he said, okay, baby, take over. Uh -huh. And she just ripped the place right. up. Just came forth. And he wasn't walking back and forth like that. Uh -uh. He was sitting down. He was sitting down enjoying himself. His, his word was just, it was, uh, when you can make me continue to think about mm -hmm. something, yeah. even the basics of, your, right. of, of what you're saying, mm -hmm. weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, mm -hmm. I know now, and, 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 and what also confirms it is uh, Prophet Adam came back and said, I saw you picking uh, 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 fruit off the tree. Mm -hmm. I went, oh, yes, yes, you sir. know, I almost lost mm -hmm. it again because the, the the message that day was about bearing, bearing fruit, fruit, making you know, are, yeah. are, are you are you are you producing fruit? Are you producing? And I've not forgotten it. Or are you a fraudulent Christian? There you go. I mean, it was mm -hmm. just that's anointing. Mm -hmm. That that's the spin I put on it. Are you a fraud? I'm a priest. That, that's <laughs> that's the anointing. That I already told him you you know I'm a priest somewhere. Might not be in San Diego, but I'm preaching somewhere. Yes, ma'am. I've always said, and yes, I've been in the office where you two were standing, mm -hmm. but I've always said, when God calls one, he calls the other. Exactly. And to me, it's impossible for one to be so anointed uh -huh. and right up underneath the house, there is no anointing. Exactly. Come on. Come on. And so it's like, to me, it's the work together. That's it. Mm -hmm. That will build the ministry because you don't want a house divided where when he preaches you got 15 and when she preaches you got 25 and then oh well you can't preach because you know and then that's a house divided exactly and it don't just show up here at the church it shows up at the house right Amen. and then there the devil is breaking up the family mm -hmm. because of you're not acknowledging each other's anointing. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. It becomes a exactly right. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a competition because, listen, there's no love abiding. Mm -hmm. 
You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is why I always tell y'all, whenever we're invited to go out somewhere and render a service, don't all y'all get on one side and sit by yourself, mingle in the congregation with the people. I hate that. We go on, we go on to church, and, and everybody walk in, we walk in, 50 people. We all sit on one side of the church, and their church on the other side. I'm like, this is just as crazy. I ain't never seen nothing like this before. That's almost like church of the day and church of the night. Yeah. Right. What kind of love is that showing? We're supposed to be fellowshipping. We're supposed to be mingling amongst each other, getting to know each other. Yeah. Because of where she sat and who sat next to her, it came to us. Yes. I didn't even know. He yes. wasn't even there. I wasn't even there. But it came to us that people came and asked about who we were, mm -hmm. and we were able to go and minister to people in a mm -hmm. hospital somewhere. Yeah. And he wasn't even there. I wasn't in there. And the person sat next to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we went back to the church, and she's right. Ah! She walked up like, Did she hear me? Her and the lady we prayed for. Both of them sitting there. Yes. Both of them sitting there. These signs yeah. shall follow them that believe. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. It, it just. That's how God Only thing God is looking for is an opportunity to show himself Jesus. mighty. But how is he going to do it if you're not letting him operate the way he's supposed to? The Bible says there are many diversities of gifts, but one God. That's it. He's the one that distributes the gifts. He gives them to who he wants. He gives you as many gifts as he thinks you can handle. That's right. I'm sorry. Kurt, yeah, we're in the morning, she got the conversation all the time because, because no, because she's serious.